Hi, welcome to this video on solving equations. All right, if you want to pause the video now and take down these important notes, uh, there's just two of them here, uh, and we'll begin. I'm assuming you've already done that, so let's carry on. Solving equations, there are three methods that I use in various situations to solve equations. Um, obviously, they're, well, technically they're four, because you've got a very basic one, something like x plus three equals eight. And this is what I call the what method. Uh, the mathematical name is actually solving by inspection, which means I literally inspect it. I look at it, and I think to myself, what plus three is going to give me eight? In this case, obviously, x is going to be five. Okay. X equals 5. The reason because if x is 5, then 5 plus 3 is 8. Okay. That's solving by inspection. But you're really going to get something as simple as that to answer in any exam paper. So I'm going to go through the three main, uh, three main uh, methods of, that we could use to solve equations. The first, uh, we'll look at this question, uh, relates back to when you did function machines. And all that I have to ask you is, say, well, as I was asking before, I'm Start with x. What have I done to x? Well, first thing I've done is I multiplied it by 2, I then added 3, and I got out 15. Okay? So in order to get back to x, I have to do the inverse. I have to do the opposite thing. So I have to subtract 3, I have to divide by 2, and then I should get our x. So let's do that. So 15 subtract 3. 15 subtract 3, that's going to be 12. 12 divided by 2, that gives me 6. So 6 is equal, put that on the right way around, so x is equal to 6. And let's try this. If we take 6 and we substitute it in, 2 times 6, that gives me 12. 12 plus 3, 15. So 6 is clearly the right answer. Next section. Well, next next question. Okay, we'll put x equals six. We'll never solve that. Um, next question. This method here works um, pretty regularly, and you can apply that method to either or to either of these next questions. The problem is it breaks down when our questions start getting a little bit more complicated. We won't encounter those questions just yet. But definitely, if you want to advance the way you solve equations, bring in fractions, and these sorts of things. It can get a little bit complicated. For foundation level, though, that method is totally fine. So here I would say, uh, if I wanted to do that method, I'd say x, first thing I did was I times by 3, and I minus 2, and I got out 13. So I'd have to add 2, which gives me 16, divide by 3, and then I could get out x. Okay? So on this case here, or in this case, <coughs> sorry, not 16, by the way, that was. Obviously, 15 and then divide by 3. Um, in this case here, I'm going to use a different method though. I'm going to use um, what I do to one side, I do to the other. Right? And that's a, a pretty simple idea. If I have 2 equals 2 and I add 1 to this side, I have to add 1 to that side. If I divide this whole side by 2, I have to divide that whole side by 2. If I square this side, I have to square that side. And the reason for that is quite simply because of this little sign there, the equal sign. And this method involves what we call maintaining the equality, maintaining that equal sign. What is on one side is on the other side. You'll often see um, maths teachers or maths videos referring to kind of a balance, you've got to balance the equation. And that's what you're doing. What if, what I, if I've taken something away from this side, I've got to take something away from this side. So I'm constantly balancing my equation. I'm maintaining that equality. So here I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I need to get to x. Right? I need to find out what x is. I need to go um, blah, 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 x equals, and then get an answer out. So I need to get to x first. So I always start on the outside, so furthest away from x. So 3 is pretty close to x, this is 3 times x. I'm going to start with this minus 2. And the way I get rid of minus 2 is I do the inverse operation. I undo what has been done by doing the inverse operation. I do the opposite thing. So minus 2, I'm going to add 2, and I've got to add 2 on both sides. So this is going to give me 13 plus 2. 13 plus 2 is 15. And minus 2, uh, sorry, minus 2 plus 2 is actually going to cancel out, because minus 2 plus 2 is 0. So that's actually 3x plus 0. I don't need 3x plus 0, I can just write 3x. 
Well, let's say 3x is equal to 15. All right, now my 3x is all by itself. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to divide by 3. And the reason I'm dividing by 3 is that between this x and the 3 is actually a time sign. We all know that 3x equals 3 times x. So to undo what has been done, to undo times by 3, I'm going to now do the inverse operation, which is divide by 3. And obviously I'm going to do it to both sides because I have to maintain that equality. What I do to one side, I must do to the other. So 3x divided by 3, um, over here, we'll keep the colours the same, I'm <coughs> dividing by 3. So 3 times x divided by 3 is just going to leave me with x. x is all by itself, Brilliant, which is where I wanted to get to. 15 divided by 3, though, gives me 5. So I can say here, x equals 5. Okay. The third method which I'm going to do, by the way, this method will also work with this. Okay, it will also work with this. The third method is a little bit more advanced. Right? Um, and it's simply called the float and ping method. It works very similarly to this, but it doesn't require you having to write everything down there. So if you are really good with um, your solving of equations, um, you've practiced quite a few and you think, okay, great, advance onto this method because it will speed you up as much as possible. Okay? First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to write down that little sign. It's three little dots like that, and it means therefore. Right? And this is just becoming more mathematically um, lingual. Okay? That is a lovely mathematical term, a lovely mathematical symbol, which allows your maths to flow like a language. So what I'm saying is 5x plus 2 equals negative 8. Great. If 5x plus 2 equals negative 8, therefore 5x must equal... And what have I done? I've actually grabbed this plus 2 because it's no longer there. I've grabbed it. There it is. It's in my hand. And I've taken it across to the other side. But as I do that, I have to do the inverse operation. The reason this is called float and ping is because as it crosses my equal sign, it pings, okay? And it changes, it changes to the inverse. All right, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to minus 2. Now, you do not have to write that. You don't have to write it. You can if you want to kind of get your mental focus going. But if I have negative 8 to take away 2, that's going to give me negative 10. All right, so I'm taking away a further 2. I've started on negative 10, uh, on negative 8, and I'm counting down the negative um, number line a further 2 more. All right, so now I've got negative 5 equals negative 10. So now my math statement says 5x plus 2 equals negative 8. Therefore, 5x must equal negative 10. Therefore, x must equal, and what have I done here? I've divided by 5. Well, negative 10 divided by 5 is simply negative 2. It looks very similar to this, except you don't have this plus plus and the cancels. Um, it's, it's easier to do. Please, please don't put your calculations in the middle. All right? Don't in the middle of this do 15 divided by 3 equals 5. Don't do that. All right? The reason that I ask you not to do that is because you need to start getting used to doing that in your head. If you have to do that, do it somewhere like at the back of your book or on a separate page. Right? Don't include it in there. And the reason why is that these examiners and the markers, when they look at that, there is no other way for you to get from this step to that step without dividing by 3. There's no other way. You cannot go from 3x equals 15 to x equals 5 without going through this step. Putting that in there is enough. Right? It's absolutely enough for you to do. Don't add to your workload. Okay? It's, it's inefficient when we're solving equations. We aim for efficiency when we solve. All right, I'm going to put on uh, two more slightly more complicated equations. Um, please feel free to um, pause this and rewind um, if you misunderstand anything or uh, you want to take notes of any of these past problems that have come up. Okay, so let's have a look at these ones. I want two brackets x plus 3 equals 20. And I would like to put up three brackets, 2x minus 3, close brackets, equals 15. Okay, now obviously here in this one, you look at this and go, oh great, we've got brackets. Now, if you've done expanding brackets, this should be quite easy for you. All that's going to happen is it's going to involve an extra step. There are actually two different variants of this that you could do. I'm going to show you both. First method is where I expand the bracket outward. So I multiply the x by 2 and I multiply the 3 by 2. So in this case, I'm actually going to get out 2x plus 6. I see this very often, 2x plus 3, where we 
expanded the first term perfectly, but we forget about the third term. Please, I mean the second term. Please don't forget about that. It is not 2x plus 3, it's 2x plus 6. And obviously the 20 hasn't changed, so it equals 20. And now it's exactly the same. I can do um, my um, a function machine, I can do um, taking away from both sides, or I can do my third and ping. I'm going to choose my um, both sides method. Uh, so here I'm going to subtract 6 and should subtract 6, so 2x equals 14. And then I can simply uh, divide by 2 and divide by 2, so therefore x equals 7. Okay, uh, let's have a look on this side, exactly the same, the only change, instead of having just a plain x term, I now have 2x, so you need to bear that in mind. 3 times 2x is 6x, and 3 times negative 3 gives me negative 9, right? equals 15. And from here, <clears throat> I can go add 9 to both sides, plus 9 to both sides, and 15 plus 9 gives me 24. And these simply cancel. Oh, by the way, these cancel there as well. Um, and now I can divide through by 6 and divide by 6, and I end up with x equaling 4. Okay, now I said there were two ways of doing these. If I draw a line underneath here, I will show you the other two ways. What is actually happening to this bracket here? This bracket is being times by 2, it's being multiplied by 2. So, before I expand it, before I do this, I can simply divide both sides by 2. So if I have 2 brackets x plus 3 equals 20, and I divide both sides by 2, I end up with x plus 3 equals 10. I can solve that by inspection pretty easily. What plus 3 is 10, x must equal 7. And I end up with the same answer. Let's see if it works on this side. <clears throat> 3 brackets, 2x minus 3 equals 15. Again, I can just divide both sides by 3. Divide by 3 on both sides. And end up with 2x minus 3 equals 5. I have to go another step. It's not as easy as that, but it's certainly a lot easier than doing it this way. So that's 2x is equal to 8. And the way I did that, I simply added 3 on both sides. And now I just divide through by 2, so x equals 4. And again, I get exactly the same answer. Alright, so that's solving equations. I've also thrown in some brackets there. Um, if you have any difficulty with this, check out some of my other videos, perhaps on expanding brackets. Or if you want to go and push yourself a little bit, I've got some uh, videos on expanding brackets with fractions. Um, have a look at those. Uh, or perhaps uh, have a look on Khan Academy for some other videos, or some more videos on YouTube. Anyway, that's it for me. I'll see you next time. Cheers.